A No Nine Awakening is the latest Sweet Baby Ink bomb, and it's really no shocker after you've watched the horrendous looking gameplay, character models, and once you get a taste of the story, we're just a few minutes into the game, she's talking about how she's an empowered woman, and of course, it's launch weekend, so you would think that the numbers would be booming, lots of people would be playing it, but that certainly isn't happening. I have a few different things to show off, but before I get into the topic, if you enjoy the content I create, check out the links in the description, join the community in my live streams, and consider supporting through Patreon or YouTube memberships. Now, I have already started my live streamed playthrough of this game. The first part will be in the description, and when I'm uploading this tonight at 7 p.m. Eastern, I will be continuing because, yes, I seemingly hate myself by playing all of these games, but on release day, we could see that the numbers were not off to a strong start. It was sitting at 100 114 when I took the screenshot, and then 169, five hours before, which of course was at release. And of course, these are just abysmal numbers in totality, but we were thinking maybe it's a Thursday, it's affecting the numbers, there's lots of people who aren't going to play until the weekend. But now we're talking about Saturday afternoon, and the all-time peak so far has not even been today, it was yesterday on Friday, with a Easily 285 people in game. And keep in mind, Bandai Namco bought Reflector Studios specifically for this game, just like Sony bought Firewalk Studios specifically for Concord. And of course, it's no shocker to see DEI-driven games fail. We've seen a slew of them fail over the years, and it doesn't look like that is going to change anytime soon. But what's hilarious to me is that we are at the peak of the culture war so far, and it's only getting worse for these companies. And gamers are only seeing more and more wins, but we are talking about the mainstream gaming media constantly defending these games, writing articles talking about how passionate the teams behind them are. They typically give these games good scores. IGN only gave this a five and it's still too generous, but usually they give these games good scores. They give them a lot of press. So the modern audience that these companies want to market these titles to have an abundance of ways of finding these games. This is supposed to be a triple A game. This is not an independently made title. It's a triple A, and you would think that it would muster better numbers than 285. And again, that was on a Friday. Never mind on the Saturday of release, and it can't even top 200 people in game, which is simply abysmal. And if you go ahead and you look at some of the Twitch stats, not that these are, you know, particularly important, but it says it's got 2,630 to viewers right now, and the owner estimations are still not good. It's estimated to have 1.2K to 1.5K copies sold, which is still simply god awful for them, right? They expected this to do a heck of a lot better. And what's even more hilarious about this is the fact that if you head on over to the Steam page and you start looking at the reviews, first of all, it's sitting at mostly negative with 32 reviews, so not even that many. But when you start really paying attention to the detail, a majority of them actually received the product for free. Apparently, this is being bundled with GPUs, and you are able to reclaim a copy of this for free. And that just means that for these player numbers, like the, you know, as it says right now, 191, a certain percentage of those are not even people who paid to play this game, which is, in my opinion, the way that it should be, given this title should have never released and they should have never scammed people out of 50 freaking dollars. But even the people who got it for free, who you think would be a little bit more generous in their score saying, eh, it's not the best game, but at the same time, it was for free and free is good. No, no, no. They're still getting raked across the coals. 
saying things like, wow, just wow, I got this game for free with an AMD GPU purchase, and even then I feel like I want a game refund The combat feels like it's from 2005 as well as the lack of facial expressions. The eyes just stare straight ahead and it is quite disturbing. The combat is woeful, just dodge and hit. Stealth works the best, but it rarely stays that way. I personally have put four hours into the game so far, and yeah, it was quite the clusterfuck. I mean, it genuinely did not feel like a brand new game released in 2024. It feels so outdated. It's buggy. It's broken. Visually, it looks terrible. I mean, it is such a disappointing experience, and a lot of people last year thought that Forspoken was a terrible game. This is Forspoken times 50. It is significantly worse than even that, at least Forspoken. While, yes, it had terrible dialogue and writing, visually looked pretty good, and ran relatively well. This game is just a disaster in every way, shape, or form. Then, of course, you get into the fact that a lot of the abilities are really mediocre, and you don't have a jump, which is crazy in 2024, but you also have a lot of the enemies looking exactly the same, having the same abilities and weapons. It's just terrible. And I can't say I'm particularly shocked when you find out not only did Sweet Baby Inc. work on this game, but Kim Belair is one of the co-writers of this game as far as we are aware. And David Bedard, the other SBI co-founder, heavily influenced this game and the content within it. Like, this is what happens when narrative consultants feel that they deserve a chance to write a game in totality that they are better than even the people they're hired to typically micromanage. And they came out with the worst piece of content of the year, maybe. I mean, it's definitely in the top three. That is for certain, maybe even the worst of the year. And I think for a lot of people, they're not even giving this a try because first of all, a lot of gamers are boycotting Sweet Baby Ink titles right now. But secondly, this just doesn't look like a good game and nobody is saying that it is. The modern audience had a chance to show up and monetarily support this game. They could have proven the chuds wrong, but but yet again, they didn't because the modern audience doesn't really exist. And there are millions of gamers right now who are boycotting Sweet Baby Ink titles. Now, I don't think that this would have been super popular even if Sweet Baby was not affiliated with it. But on the flip side, Sweet Baby is. And that means that there are going to be tons of people who might have at least given it a shot who refused to touch it with a 10-foot pole because there is such a massive boycott going on surrounding narrative consultation companies. And, well, one of these days, these companies are going to have to realize, the Bandai Namco's out there, the Sony's out there, are going to have to realize that this is not a winning strategy, that making modern-day activism slop is not going to make you money. It is not going to sell copies of a game, and they either are going to have to start listening to gamers again and creating really high-quality experiences, or they're going to have to get comfortable with the fact that they are not going to exist in just a few years. Like, do we really think Reflector Entertainment is going to make another game after this? Absolutely not. Do we think that Firewalk Studios is going to make another game after Concord? Absolutely not. There's no way that those teams are going to stay together, that these companies are just going to hand them big budgets again and say, go for it, create something good. That's just not going to happen. So of course, Unknown 9 Awakenings release weekend is here, and it's going terribly for Reflector and Bandai. It peaked all time 285 on Friday. As of right now, Saturday afternoon, it's sitting at 191, so it's going terribly for them, and I'll be keeping my eye on this over the next few days. But for now, that's all that I really had to discuss in this video. Let everyone know your thoughts in the comments below. If you enjoyed this, give it a like, and if you didn't, give it a dislike. I appreciate your support either way, but I will talk to you all again in the next video really soon.